If you could choose just one shirt to add to your collection, which would it be? Well, in today's episode, we're going to be seeing some of the best shirts that Hummel have made in 2022. Honestly, that colour combo is really fresh. And my wife would just sort of say, yeah, it looks like a unicorn's been to the toilet on. <laughs> For me, it's a close to perfect shirt. Hey guys, welcome back to Behind the Chevrons and welcome to a very special Christmas episode. In this episode, myself and Tim, who I'm going to introduce very shortly, have brought along three of our favourite Hummel shirts of the year. We've each picked three shirts and we're going to share them with each other, talk about what we love about the designs. Before we go any further, make sure you subscribe to the channel anytime a new episode goes live. You'll find out if you are subscribed, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also leave a like if you enjoy this. And let us know what your favourite shirts of the year are in the comments as well. But now, I'm going to introduce Tim to us all. So Tim, welcome to Behind the Chevrons. How are you? Pleasure to be here. Very well. Good. And Tim, many people will know you by another name or the name of your Instagram account. So tell us what that name is and uh, what that account is all about. Well, it's called F Football Shirts My Wife Hates. Um, <laughs> and uh, it came about, I wanted to set up a an Instagram account just like cataloging my collection. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was chatting to a guy at work about it and we both said, oh, we, we had lots of shirts when we were younger, but now my <laughs> wife doesn't let me wear them anymore. <laughs> so I, I realised that everyone's got the same problem. Well, a lot of yeah. people got the same problem, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know, that, that aren't really on board like we are. So yeah. uh, so it was all, all about that, really. Honestly, I'm sure many people at home sympathise with that very much. Yeah. Now, Tim, you've actually brought along the shirt which epitomises the whole football shirts my wife hates uh, thing. Show us that shirt. Why, why this shirt in particular? Well, this, yeah, this is, this is right at the bottom of the pile for my <laughs> wife, this one is. So, so this is the football shirt your wife hates the most? I, 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 yeah, it's got to be up there. But it's such yeah. a classic. It's I mean, I... <laughs> I love it. It's it's just there's so much in the design and the pattern. It's a classic. It is. Um, but yeah, whenever I'd, I'd walk in the room and my wife would just sort of say, you know, whatever came into her head. Yeah. And she just said, it looks like a unicorn's been to the toilet on it. <laughs> so, like, and that's that's all I could think about after that. So, uh, I was not expecting yeah. that. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's the time she comes out. Amazing. With, um, it's probably it's just just a collector's item, as as, as we all have. Well, hey, even if your wife hates it, we love it. It's a good shirt, oh, nonetheless. Yeah. Nice but that's great. It. And Tim, what are some of the other things about that account? I know you're big into photography. Tell us a bit about that and how that's kind of shapes a lot of the content that you do. Yeah, so it started off as a bit of a, a joke, really, the whole football shirt is my wife right, thing. Right. Um, but as it's sort of developed, I've started to bring my photography into it because I, sort of, I do a bit of photography on the side. And uh, yeah, I like to take the shirts out to you know locations either related to the shirt hmm. or just something completely random that looks quite nice aesthetically. And yeah, it's become a bit of a photography account now, which is, yeah. which is quite nice. So it's a bit of an overlap for me, really. I mean, Tim, yeah. I can say I've certainly noticed your photos and really enjoyed them. So they're great. And um, can you tell us just about being part of the community? We talk a lot about the football shirt community. What is it like from your perspective being in that community? What are some of the things you really enjoy and have enjoyed in the recent years about it? I, I just love seeing shirts. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yep. yeah I, as simple I, as that. Yeah. I, I think like there's so many, everybody's got very specific interests. Mm. There's so many different niches. Yep. You know, you'll see something completely different one day. And mm. I, I, I just like that, that the way that everybody shares, you know, what they're really passionate about, mm. really. So, yeah. yeah. That's that. Well, Tim, you're in good company here behind the Chevrons. We love shirts too. <laughs> Tim, we've had a great day, haven't we? At Hummel HQ, we've been going through some of the shirts. Looking at some of the designs from this year and from yesteryear, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it was hard to pick just three, wasn't it? Really difficult, yeah, yeah. Just to narrow it down, really, there's too many to pick. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, we could have picked 30 each, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but we've narrowed it down to three. Yeah. We're going to go in reverse order. We'll start with your third choice, yeah. and then we'll go to my Let's third, and we'll keep going. Again, this is going to be a surprise for us, so I have no idea what to expect. But these are all shirts from this year, uh, released in 2022 from Hummel. Let's get to it. So, at number three for you, Tim. Okay, this is this yeah, is this, this is, is a pre-match shirt. This yeah. is surprising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the Real Betis pre-match shirt from this year. This is really cool, Tim. Why yeah. did you choose it? Uh, yeah, tell me what you like about it. I think it's interesting. Just pre-match shirts. You know, are they football shirts or not? I'm not. Oh not yeah. Sure. I mean, I like the way that there's a bit more 
openness with the design, mm. so sort of any, anything goes. Yeah. Um, and just, I just really like the pattern on this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of noise about the, I think it might be the home or the away shirt with the, with the, the full map on. Yes. And then yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Sort of a, a bit of a sort of more abstract interpretation it of is, it. It is. And you've got this nice gradient that runs through. Now, I'm, I'm really glad that you did pick a Primo yeah. shirt because I think we can just talk about that. Often, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the case, isn't it? The Primo shirts tend to be a bit more, like you say, a bit more free. Mm -hmm. And Hummel has certainly done some really good ones, bespoke ones for the team. I'm pretty sure this is bespoke to Betis. And I really like it. Yeah. As you say, it ties into the theme of the kits but it does the same yeah. thing. Really nice. Yeah, you, I think that the one thing to point out, we've got a couple, couple of extra chevrons on the, on, the, on the shoulder. That's a great point to mention. Um, so there's, yeah, four. Because there's only, it seems huh. to reduce every every year because there's <laughs> more patches that go on the, the sleeves. So yeah, true. No, that's a really good point. You don't have the patches, do you, on the pre-match? So no. it feels a bit more like the, you know, the, the, the shirts of yesteryear where it went all the way down yeah. the arms. So. When, when you, no, it's funny because I was nice. thinking it looks a little bit retro and, and I think you're spot on. It's that those extra chevrons make a big difference. Mm. Really like the style of the Betis crest there as well. Yeah, they're really, it, it's rare to get that on a pre-match as well, mm. isn't it? You don't really mm. ever get that sort of heat press, this sort of relief yeah. Um, pattern. Yeah, mm. and I, I think pre match shirts count. I think they go so. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I love them. You know, the, the players wear them before the games. Oh, I like it. Nice. Very strong start. Yeah. So, I already know what this one is. This is my third choice. Right. The Coventry third shirt. I guess I'll make my case to why yeah, I like this one. Yeah, so, yeah. I absolutely love uh, Coventry shirts across the board this year. It's something which um, I've really enjoyed since Hummel came into Coventry. They've just been a great combo. Superb, yeah. They've been so yeah. good. And this one, um, very well, the whole collection, Home Away and Third, was all about the cathedral. Really like how they took the aesthetic of the cathedral, put it onto here. And it's when you see the shot of this in the context in the cathedral, I, I just, I just loved it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you picked this, but it was between that and the Betis for, oh, the, was it? for, for third as well. There you go, um, great minds think alike. And this is, uh, I mean, this is just down the road from me, uh, the cathedral. Obviously, it's like a literal representation of like the architecture, isn't it? But yeah, it's just this really interesting pattern. And these are obviously the stained glass windows, aren't they? Yeah. In one of the elevations and. Mm. It's yeah, it works really well, doesn't it, as a pattern mm. on a, on a shirt. And just quickly as well, Tim, is this the kind of shirt? So you're not a commentary fan. Um, no, no. You know, you're no, a Villa fan, no. right? Villa fan, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but would you ever? This is a controversial question for any collector. Would you ever collect uh, another kind of UK club shirt? Uh, yeah. And if so, is this the kind of shirt that would fall into that category? The, yeah, it definitely would. To be honest, um, if it's a nice shirt. It's a nice shirt. Yeah. Um, and I've actually I've got the. The commentary shirts, which have got the the Mexico template, yeah, with their sort of new yeah. interpretation. I've got I've got the home in a way. They're both great. Them, so. They're great. <laughs> Guilty already. <laughs> no, honestly, I think Coventry are, are just one of those teams where if you if you like shirts, you like to collect shirts, mm -hmm. you could do a lot worse than than them. So there we go. That's my third choice. Let's get on to your second choice. <laughs> now, Tim, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, or maybe you will believe this. This is this is my second choice too. Oh, I, I had to double check when I finished. Up. This, this is this is your second no choice, also mine. The Brombu away shirt, Brombu, yeah, Brombu, yeah. however you say it. This shirt, I mean, again, we talked about it in the previous episode, but I'd love to hear from you, Tim, why you chose this, why this is one of your favourite Hummel shirts of the year. The pattern that runs through is just really nice. There's there's a big tower block in the center, which I think I just, <laughs> it, is. it just sort of stands out to me. It's just like, well, are there any? Can we think of any other shirts that got tower block <laughs> tower blocks on them? Yeah, yeah. Um, right in the middle. But, but yeah. the, this was designed by the fans, wasn't it? Was, it? So, exactly. You know, the, exactly. It, 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 there's just so much of a backstory to it. Mm. Um, the colorways are just really nice. So we've got yeah. the yellow badge sponsor mm. and all the chevrons and the and the, and the cuffs. Just, yeah, just work yeah. really well really nicely um, finished off shirt, really. Yeah. I just love as well, if we flip it over the back, look at that pass on the back there. Again, <laughs> in all its glory. Again, this is my second choice, so yeah, yeah. we're on well, the same we're, page. Yeah, definitely. I think we're, we're both in unanimous agreement then, aren't we? This yeah. The, the so, one. It's so funny that you chose the same one. Yeah, and I think, um, again, if we just turn it over, like you said about the, the colours, it's really good to see. Those things really do help make a shirt when you've got a sponsor that adapts to the colorway. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Honestly, it's for me, it's a close to perfect shirt. It's certainly one of the best ones of the year. Love it. Beautiful. 
And as we get to our top choices, Tim, just to mix things up a bit, I'm going to suggest that we actually put them on, we actually wear them. So again, I don't know what, what you've chosen. You don't know what I've chosen. Hopefully not the same. Hopefully <laughs> not the same again, yeah. We'll be fighting over the shirt. But no, let's, uh, let's have a quick change. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what you've chosen. So Tim, as if by magic, we've both changed into our shirts of the year. <laughs> Tell me about yours first. This is a really good choice. I like your pick here, Tim. Why is this your shirt of the year? Well, this is, uh, this is the Malaga Away shirt. Um, it's really interesting just with the pattern. Um, mm. It just it's one of those ones that I saw online, just the release pictures. And I was like, you sort of instantly fall in love with it. Yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just that. Um, yeah. And then having it in person, there's so many more things to it. There's so yeah. much more to it. Um, obviously got the nice relief on the, on the badge. Yeah, we just like we're better, didn't we? So there again, you can yeah. see again a bit of the detail of the fabric through the badge. Yeah, um, yeah nice, nice. I, I like the way that there's very subtle stripe pattern. Yeah. Um, the home shirt is the, I think it's green and white or blue and white stripes. Yep. yep. Um, and this is, you've still got the stripes, but you've got like these negative gradients going up and down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then of course the rose. Yes. Um, this is because there's a there's a rose plantation near to the stadium. Right, which right. Which is what the stadium was named after. Brilliant, um, brilliant. So, so it's brought through into the shirt. And obviously that's the, yeah, a bit about the colourway as well. So, great, it's great. Um, just really love it, really. Honestly, yeah. that, Colour combo is really fresh. I can't think of many shirts that have implemented that. The combination of that pink with the, I don't even know what you'd call that, kind of purpley, yeah. mauvey yeah. kind of tone. It's really, yeah. really nice. And um, as I say, very good choice. Yeah. And uh, I'm playing to the home crowd really here in Denmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the Denmark uh, BLS Hafnia shirt, which they wore in a couple of games as well. This is just straight up my favorite shirt of the year, I think for me. Um, I really like, I think, collaboration shirts. A lot of people are a bit so-so on them, but I think this is a great example of it. You've got the touches, again, from BLS Hafnia, the kind of fashion side of things, but it still looks and feels like a Danish shirt. Like, if anything, I, I wish this was the away shirt, actually, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I really yeah. like it. Yeah, I think it's, again, it's got uh, all the kind of the trademark features you'd expect, but with the lines here, like the whole the whole design of it to me, uh, it's just a really strong football shirt, let alone the collaboration element, which I find quite interesting as well in uh, in 2022. It's nice that it's it sort of a, a bit further interpretation of the um, of the main Denmark shirt because the Denmark shirts tend to be, you know, fairly mm. fairly muted, fairly standard mm. in terms of the way they're designed. But you've got these extra stripes on the shoulders, and, the, yep. and then you've got the all the the relief pattern in the material as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got all these extra extra layers of detail. Yeah, which is really nice. That's just been a common theme, hasn't it, across the shirts? And actually, it'd be good to just go back over some of the shirts, talk about maybe what they speak to in terms of the wider industry. So I'll grab them all now and we'll go through them one by one. So Tim, we'll go back to where we started with your number three choice, the Real Betis Prima shirt. Let's just talk about some of the things which this uh, speaks to in terms of the wider industry and trends and things like this. Uh, what are some of the things that jump out to you from this one? I think that the, it's the fact that the theme from... I think there's a map on the third shirt. There is, And actually, yeah. this theme of maps and topography, yeah. you know, is sort of hit it's all at the same huge, time. It's isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Lots of different shirts around there. Yeah. Um, and it's also the, the, the pre-match shirts. It's, it's, no, it's no longer about the main shirts that the, that the players wear. Mm -hmm. It's about all of, all of the, the collection. So yeah, it's the, yeah. you know, the jackets, the T-shirts as well. Yeah. And we talked, didn't we, about the crest. Is this something which you've noticed, kind of these new uh, techniques and styles and seeing that even filtering down to things like pre-match shirts that like you mentioned. Yeah, it's, it's just interesting to see that on a pre-match shirt because you usually mm. end up with possibly a, a stitch badge or, but this, this is really nice that you've got mm. this full relief badge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one it just thing, feels really good, doesn't it? I guess, it feels really yeah, the, the, the wider trend is that generally, you know, you'd have tiers of shirts, wouldn't you? So mm. there'd be a replica that's released and a player issue. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's sort of refreshing the one sort of layer that's, you know, it the is, fans yeah. buy exactly the same as the players yeah. wear. Yeah. So yeah. It's not this sort of tier system. Yeah, that is much better. And then we come back to my third choice, the commentary shirt. Again, we touched on a few things, but um, I guess one thing which I just want to reiterate or highlight again, seeing some of the storytelling that comes through kits. It's nothing new. It's not that that's necessarily new for 2022, but I've noticed a lot more brands kind of take more ownership of that, I think, this year. Start to realise that the whole kind of genetic marketing spiel, which you sometimes used to get with kits, people can see past that now. <laughs> you know, I think pe people are uh, wise enough to that. 
So I really liked how Hummel and Coventry owned the story. It was a huge part of the marketing, of course, and the release of the shirts. And uh, for me, I think that really makes a big difference, especially, again, when you've got a good story. And just seeing the shirt again, Tim, anything else which you'd want to say? Yeah, uh, I, just think, I just think that it's nice that you've got a club here that really connects with the city. Mm. I know this is a completely physical. You know, it's, it's the architecture represented in a shirt, but we've seen it with loads of the shirt, uh, comic shirts over the, over the last few years. Mm. There's, there's always representations of the city, the chant in the in the shirt as well. Yeah. So there's a big story to tell, isn't there, with, with every shirt that's released. Definitely. And back to the Bromru away shirt, which we both chose in yeah. second place. Tim, tell me what this shirt, again, is speaking to uh, for you in terms of wider trends. I, th- I think that there's a, there's a trend to to have the fans involved, and that's, that's, that's a brilliant thing because mm-hmm. so many shirts, you know, get hidden away, don't they? And then they, they, get, they come out on release day and the fans are like, oh, <laughs> this again. Or, you know, so getting the fans involved so intricately in this design, um, it was brilliant. And it's a trend that we see more and more of mm. a- across the board. Yeah, and I loved when we when we had our Bumber episode, we talked about this, how it was, um, I think, not just kind of token involvement. Like sometimes you see clubs... They say they involve the fans, and it would just be like a little online poll or something. Anyway, yeah. there's very little action. Like one meeting, consultation Ex- group. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. to hear that this was different, this was actually a focus group of a bunch of fans who had regular meetings yeah. back and forth. Um, how much fun that must have been just to be in those meetings. Yeah, but it really is uh, the right way to do it. And Tim, as we begin to wrap up, tell me about this Malaga shirt. Again, you mentioned that you saw it online. And that's great, isn't it, when you actually see a shirt that you wouldn't otherwise have noticed yeah I think, you add it to your collection i think it's it's, it's brilliant it's, it's just a, another trend in that everything's so visible now on social media and the interesting thing is this was literally just a picture of the shirt <laughs> and you know it, it sort of stood out and it's not a not a team that would have been on my radar really unless right. you know right. we were looking through twitter or instagram yeah so um it's just the word on you know marketing is is, is key for these shirts mm. Not good for the wallet, though, is it? Not good for the wallet, no, no, definitely not. No. <laughs> it's like uh, yeah. every, every week, I both love and hate what I do. I, lo- I love what I do, <laughs> but I also realise how uh, how stretched my, my budget goes <laughs> yeah. for shirts. And um, I wanted to mention the, the collaboration element again. I think that's such an interesting aspect. Um, obviously, we've seen it in the club scene a lot as well. But I think it's interesting seeing international shirts embrace that. I think for many years, a lot of there's been some great shirts which kind of designers have been involved in, but they didn't tend to be as upfront on the designs themselves. So that's fascinating for me to see. Um, I mean, I would expect certainly in future major tournaments to have several nations with collaboration shirts, which seems quite strange and alien. It, it does seem strange. And yeah, it, 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 it's fairly unique, really, isn't it, to, to Denmark? I can't think of any other international teams that had those sort of collaborations so yeah yeah a lot of it's them it's nice to be going yeah. down that down that road really yeah yeah no yeah. yeah i think a lot of them have um they've never actually fully embraced it or shown yeah, it yeah so yeah it's very interesting tim it's been a lot of fun thanks for yeah. coming on just a reminder for people at home where can we find you uh if you want to see well, your photography yeah just at, at football shirts my wife hates on instagram it's easy Twitter, as that. so yeah brilliant tim thanks so much for coming on it's been great and very good choices once again been a pleasure thank you thanks for thanks for having me and guys i hope you've enjoyed that as much as we have we'd love to hear in the comments what your favorite shirt of the year is maybe it's one of the ones we chose maybe it's another one that we've not talked about so let us know in the comments and have a great holiday season too we'll see you in 2023 take care and all the best 